Hello everyone, to start this recap we're going to be beginning with the code that we left off of in the lesson. Uh, our first goal that we're going to try to accomplish is creating our own distance function. We know that we have this uh, distance function here provided by Python, but we know that we can easily recreate this with Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and do that. Of course to define our function we're going to be doing def, and let's just say our custom dist. Uh, and of course, we need to take in our four values. I'm just going to say x1, y1, and then x2, y2. So first, we know that Pythagorean theorem it depends on side lengths of the triangle. So the way to get the length or the distance between these uh, x1 and x2 and y1 and y2 is simply to just uh, subtract them from each other. So dx, which is going to stand for distance, and of course, x for x, is going to be uh, x2 minus x1 and it's going to be the same for our y. So we're going to say dy equals y2 minus y1. So we can also just comment here and just say distance x and after distance y. Now we know that the next job in Pythagorean theorem is to square these and then add them. So we're just going to say uh, that our value is going to be, um, you say, squared, is going to be dx times dx plus dy times dy. Nice thing about Python is that uh, it will follow the order of operations, so it will actually do these multiplications first before it will do the addition, which is perfect. Now we have our squared value here, and our final thing is to uh, square root it. So we know that square root in Python, we just do SQRT right there, just do square root squared. And that's perfect, and then we can just return rooted. So now instead of dist function here, we can use custom dist. And if we start up the program, run it, and if we switch screens here, here we go. We see that in the console, which actually got cut off, let me bring that up. See that in the console that when we click the circle away, it doesn't really do much, but when we press in the circle, uh, I'm clicking right now, it's a circle pressed, I'm clicking now, nothing is happening. So we see that our custom distance function is working. I'm just going to stop the function and we're going to move on to our second objective. I'm going to bring that down again. So second objective is to now make the mouse a circle instead of just a point and use that for collision detection. So to make our mouse a circle instead of just a point, uh, of course we're going to have to make uh, draw another circle heel here. It's going to say that the ellipse is going to be at mouse x and mouse y of course. And let's say that it's going to be uh, 20, 20. So it's going to be have a width and height of 20 and it's going to basically have a radius of 10. I'm going to also expand our canvas here. So now to add in the actual collision detection, uh, we're still going to be taking uh, our distance from mouse x and mouse y, uh, but instead of doing 50, which again was the radius of our original circle, uh, because 50 was kind of like the maximum distance that our mouse pointer could be from the circle and there be a collision, uh, now that our mouse pointer actually has a circle on it, we can expand this distance and we do that by just adding the two circles radiuses. So uh, the radius of the second circle is 10, so it's going to be radius uh, 1 is going to be 50. Our radius 2 is simply 10. Uh, let me make that easier to read. So now what we do is we just add them up, and we get 50 plus 10 is 60. So now that we make this 60, uh, it's going to test if the length between our mouse pointer and the circle is... Uh, less than 60, which would mean that they're most definitely, uh, the circles are most definitely touching. So you can go ahead and test this when you run our program. There we go. Uh, I made a little bug here. I forgot to um, make sure to clear the background every draw loop, so you can fix that easily. Just saying background 200. There you go. Run it again. Now let's also bring over console so we could see uh, what the program is saying. 
So now our uh, circle and everything is working. So now I'm clicking over here. Nothing is showing up in the console, which is great. Now I'm going to get a little close and just have the circles overlap, not the mouse pointer. So now if I click, we see that it says our circle is pressed. Do it again from this side. Circle pressed. So we see that uh, the distance between like the center point and the cursor, uh, when it's over 60, it's not a collision. But when it's uh, just under 60, the circles are overlapping. Uh, circle pressed. So that's it for this recap. Now we have the knowledge we need to uh, make a game. So we're going to be doing that uh, for our conclusion for this course in Lesson 7. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. Bingo!